in the Valley of the Sun College Hoops on this Sunday afternoon out west. It is the inaugural Air Force Reserve Jerry Colangelo Classic, game two of our doubleheader from Talking Stick Resort Arena in downtown Phoenix. Unbeaten number six Nevada and Grand Canyon, the Antelopes and the Havocs are going nuts here pregame. It's a great environment here in the home of the Phoenix Suns. We've seen Sean one unbeaten fall already today. Should a second be worried? I don't think they should be worried, but they need to get off to a better start than they did on Friday against Arizona State, where they came out flat and really let the game get out of control. The Sun Devils raced out to a 23-8 lead, and Nevada was careless with the basketball. You start doing that here. This is make no bones about it. This is not a neutral site game. There were 7,000 Grand Canyon <laughs> students that are here. On the Sean Farnham, Roxy Bernstein with you. Just underway between number six, 9-0 Nevada, again 5-3 Grand Canyon out of the way. The key right now is, is Grand Canyon likes to help up. And so if you just settle for three-point shots, I promise you, Dan Marley is going to be pleased. If they start driving, we see this already this, this college basketball season. GCU struggles in their rotations on their back line. And it's Grand Canyon that's on the board first. Oscar Freyer from the top. Well, they need to get him going. He is really expected to play at an all-conference level. And he hasn't so far this season. A good start for the Antelopes and their pseudo home floor. Not too far from campus. They are from Phoenix, up in northern Phoenix. A step back. And Alessandro Labor with a miss and the rebound controlled by Nevada and Trey Porter. Labor is the preseason pr prediction of being the conference player of the year. Sophomore from Italy. Almost two minutes in. Nevada still looking to get on the board. Cody Martin moves in, pass deflected by Oscar Freyer, and Grand Canyon comes away with it. Nevada out of sorts offensively, just like they were the other night. And a pass inside, Trey Drexel threw it away. And a turnover on the Lopes, and there is Thunder Dan Marley. In the building that he really legitimately helped build, not because he was working in cement or construction at the time, but because he was a standout all-star in the NBA with the Phoenix Suns. He did bring his hard hat with him to the floor when he played. He was a tough physical competitor. Think about how the game has changed for Dan Marley. He led the NBA in 92-93 with 167 made three-pointers. Last year, Harden made 265. Marley wouldn't have even been in the top 25 in the NBA. And the foul is Caleb Martin on the drive for the Wolfpack. And the Grand Canyon foul is called on Alessandro Laker. First foul. Is Admiral Schofield still making shots? <laughs> he might still be up in the stands for all I know. <laughs> what a performance. If you missed it earlier, we were on ESPN. And number one, Gonzaga goes down to Tennessee. Admiral Schofield just lights out in the second half. He finished with 30. Oh, no! Jordan Caroline to miss inside, controlled by Grand Canyon. Over three minutes in, and number six, Nevada, scoreless here against Grand Canyon. First meeting officially between these two schools. They did play an exhibition last year for fire relief in Reno, a game won by Nevada by nine. And there's an illegal screen offensive foul on Grand Canyon. And the second foul on Alessandro Labor. There is Eric Musselman. Fourth season at Nevada, of course, NBA head coach for the Warriors and the Kings. What a tremendous job. Just won his 90th game as the head coach. He took home Mountain West Conference coach of the year last year. Joined Mark Fox, another great coach of Nevada history. Another coach of program in history. 20 plus wins in three consecutive seasons. Back to back Mountain West Conference champs. Still struggling to get on track against Grand Canyon out of the whack. 
Michael Finke backing in. Stayed away. And the rebound elevating is Trey Porter, one of the many good year seniors on this Nevada team. And a three off from Jordan Carolina. The struggles continue for the Wolf Pack to start the game. Well, and part of that is because they're settling for perimeter shots. And then the, the other aspect of it is they're not having no chance of getting an offensive rebound. And a three by Trey Drexel and a six dip, Grand Canyon. The transfer from Western Washington. Play and a turnover. Drexel again. Nine zip antelopes. What a start for Dan Marley's Grand Canyon Antelopes here against number six, Nevada. Jazz Johnson rims out the three. Dan Marley couldn't have drawn this one up any better to start this game. And they keep it up. The pull up. Rattles in for Jamari Milstead. 11 0. Grand Canyon timeout, Nevada. It is havoc inside the Talking Stick Resort Arena. GCU making a statement early. Eleven nothing. Grand Canyon leads number six Nevada. Just over five minutes into the ball game, and Trey Drexel hot to get this one going for the Antelopes. Yeah, two for two from beyond the arc. But as a team, they are three for three. They're sharing the ball excessively well. They're utilizing screens, spacing the floor, and meanwhile for Nevada, nothing is going right. They are three turnovers and 0 for 6 from the floor, 0 for 4 from beyond the three-point line. And if, I, if I'm Eric Musselman, I'm saying, guys, why are we settling for threes? They, first thing they did at film says yesterday, they talked about drive and dump. We need to drive the basketball and then dump it off to our teammates. Along with former UCLA captain Sean Farnham, Roxy Bernstein with, who we've seen one unbeaten fall already today, and a hot start for the pseudo home team here against another one of the unbeatens in Nevada. Well, and for Coach Marley, you think about what they're trying to do. They're trying to get their first ever win against an AP top 25 team. Now, this is a young program that just recently is eligible for the NCAA tournament. So you're trying to build a program and go out with recruit kids and be like, hey, by the way, we can't even play in the NCAA tournament. Well, now they can finally share that. Their next two games, you saw, they're going to Texas, they're going to Iowa. This is a, a Grand Canyon team that, to be honest, should have beaten Seton Hall at the Wooden Legacy. They're 0-5 in their brief history against ranked teams. The shot alluded to looking for that first win against a ranked opponent. Keep in mind, though, Nevada started slow on Friday night at Staples Center in L.A. against Arizona State before coming back. It's finally on the board, Jordan Caroline for the Wolfpack. And it was Caroline in the first half of that game that kind of got their offense back on track. So we'll see if that made bucket can add to some momentum. They trailed Arizona State by as many as 16 points in the first half of that game on Friday. Oscar Freyer with his second three. They're not getting any stops right now. And Dan Marley told us yesterday, look, my team's a really good shooting basketball team. That shouldn't come as a surprise. He wants to recruit shooters. He goes, we just haven't shot the ball well. If we can dial this thing in and shoot the ball as I expect that we can, we have a chance. Tough shot from Caleb Martin. And the rebound secured by Matt Jackson, the Aussie, for Grand Canyon. Caleb Martin is struggling to find his rhythm from beyond the arc. Now he has been a second half performer. We'll see if that holds true to form here. But a slow start for Nevada. Well, that's fine. You can be a second half performer, but that, you, you can't just be a first half shooter and not be a performer when you're shooting the ball. And he's taking some tough shots. Hey. Oh. To the basket, a foul and one for Cody Martin. Well, first of all, Cody Martin should have been teed up right there. There was without question Cody Martin should have been given the technical. Watch this after the made bucket. It's a beautiful dump, draw, and dump down, and then immediately yelling in the face of the opponent. That is that is blatant taunting, and this officiating crew should have given him a technical. 
First foul on Michael Finke. That's part of the game. Decorum on the court, decorum on the sidelines has been a big point of emphasis. And the three-point play for Martin, an 85% free throw shooter. And it's 14-5 Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon picks second in the preseason WAC poll. As New Mexico State, who we saw get Kansas all they can handle, and Kansas City yesterday was picked to win the WAC. New Mexico State is one of the programs that ever finds a way to get 20 plus wins. And guess what Grand Canyon is? One of those programs right now, they get 23 wins seemingly every season. 22 last year, involved in the CBI. Pretty good basketball in the lap. You look at what Utah Valley under Mark Pope. What Bakersfield has done recently, they made the Final Four of the NIT a couple of years ago. Well, this era of one and done, what happens is you get you get old. And when you get old and you have players that are experienced, and also with the transfer rules, you start seeing guys transfer and show up at different locations. It can change the dynamic of a program quickly. It's the exact same way that Eric Musselman has built his program. His roster is littered with transfers. Jordan Caroline, a three. The reigning Mount, Mountain West Player of the Week. Carrying the load right now offensively for the Wolfpack. That's all. Right. Milstead off with a three and the rebound. Caroline, here comes the back. That was not a good shot attempt. Again, it's Caroline from deep. He has eight of Nevada's 11. You know, Nevada is, is accustomed to falling behind. I'm sure Eric Musselman would prefer they don't. Go back to the NCAA tournament game against Cincinnati last year. I mean, they, they were struggling. An amazing comeback against the Bearcats. Nine straight for Nevada after getting down 14-2 and 11 nothing. Matt Jackson missing a three in the rebound. Michael Finke and a foul going for the rebound. It's on Nevada. Well, the number six team in the country struggling early. And then Jordan Caroline's like, fellas, just follow me. I'm going to get this thing done. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Air Force Reserve. College tuition assistance is available with the Air Force Reserve. City. Welcome What's Next, and the Basketball Hall of Fame, where the game never ends. This is what number six unbeaten Nevada's got to deal with. Not just the antelopes on the floor, but the Havocs off the floor here at Talking Stick Resort Arena. Neutral site game is what they were told. <laughs> the must bus though, hey, it's ready for neutral site games like this. It is littered. Look at the, look at your screen. This is the starting five. Don't adjust your monitor in this day of age of one and done. It says transfer redshirt senior for all five spots. They are the oldest, most experienced starting lineup in the country. And this is how Eric Musselman has decided to build his program. And in doing so, he's taken a Nevada program from uh, uh, one of those that were struggling, that had lost its way in finding success to being one of the elite in the country with expectations of making an Elite Eight Final Four type run this season. This is a roster that has five 1,000 point scorers on it. You mentioned the five fifth year seniors that start. Corey Henson off the bench, also a fifth year senior. Tough runner in the key, too strong for Jabari Milstead. And the rebound tip free and run down by Caleb Martin for the bat. Grand Canyon struggling a little bit now after a hot start out of control. And a foul called at the charge on Caleb Martin of Nevada. for the Wolfpack is Nizre Zuswa. Another transfer, but he's only a junior. There's Damari Milstead on the way. Gets to the basket. And the follow dropped in by Matt Jackson. Really impressed with the execution at both ends right now for Grand Canyon. 
They switch out of their zone. They go to man-to-man. -man. They're trying to give different looks throughout the course of this game to Nevada. Caroline hit a couple threes against their zone, so they get him out of the zone. Now you got to go to some man-to-man, -man, and look how stagnant the offense is right now for Nevada. Inside 10 to shoot. Jordan Caroline, tough runner. And the rebound, Oscar Freyer. Here come the Lopes. You know the next-gen stats they have that they show all the time in the NFL, like the percentage of completing that pass, you know the percentage of probably making that shot. Minus 34%. I mean, you're just fading away behind the backboard with a hand in your face. Tough off balance drawing the foul. Carlos Johnson, one of Grand Canyon's transfers. He came to the Valley from the Washington Huskies as Uswa called for the foul his first. One of the biggest keys is you, you've got to find a way to manufacture points. And a good pin and seal on that drive created the space and allowed Matt Jackson to get the offensive rebound and be able to finish. So sometimes posting up puts yourself in a good position uh, to get a rebound and finish. One more for Carlos Johnson. Played two years at Washington. One for Lorenzo Romar, then played last year for Mike Hopkins. Transferred here was granted immediate eligibility by the NCAA. To play for Dan Marley has been a super sub, if you will, as of late. Giving them a shot in the arm off the bench and some scoring. Averaging 10.5 points per game. Coming off the bench for Grand Canyon, who leads it by six. A lot of isolation basketball, a lot of NBA influence in Eric Musselman's offense. Jazz Johnson, the floater. And, and what I love about that is Jazz Johnson didn't take the three. He probably could have. And he has been lights out from beyond the arc. But instead, he turned it down and made a great shot out of it. Started his career at Portland, and transferred to Nevada, and really worked hard to get himself in good shape. He had the knock of being a little overweight when he was in Portland, and his conditioning wasn't great, and he's really worked hard on his body since he's arrived in Reno. Travel call, the turnovers, Caroline on the deck. Now that, that is a big part of Eric Musselman and what he's done at Nevada is he's, he sold it as, hey, look, I've coached at the highest of levels. Come here. I'm, I'm all about development of your skill set that will allow you to have an opportunity to go beyond here. And while you're here, we're going to play good basketball and win. Pick and roll, but stealing it. Here comes Nevada. Caleb Martin inside, and he's fouled. We'll go to the line. The other thing that Eric Musselman has done, even though He's been in the college game for the last number of years and assisted at Arizona State and LSU before getting the head coaching job in Nevada. But he's surrounded himself with good people who know the college game. Former USF head coach Rex Walter sitting next to him. Johnny Jones is on his staff previously, now the head coach at Texas Southern. Gus Arginal, who coached at Cal State East Bay. He was a head coach there. I mean, so even though, you know, not a major program, but guys that have been head coaches that understand how to foster a team environment. And that is important when you bring in transfers because historically you look at transfers and you say, well, so why do you transfer? Well, my coach isn't playing me enough. I don't like my role. And it starts to become more about what I don't like. I need a change of scenery. Right. It's about me. Instead of we, what Eric Musselman's been able to do is to take these kids that for whatever reason were not happy with where they were at. And they've come to Nevada and they have found a home and they found an identity and they found each other and in doing so this program has been steadily rising in the national scene Trey Drexel to the basket As Jazz Johnson wanted an offensive foul eight for Drexel to lead the Antelopes Jerry Palangelo is about to join us again Man, is he going to be excited to know that they've got a lead right now. I think he knows. Yeah. The freshman Jordan Brown in the game for Nevada, chasing after it, out of bounds. It belongs to Grant Canyon. You mentioned the Hall of Famer, Jerry Colangelo. He joins us. His antelopes are up four. Jerry Colangelo next. Grand Canyon up four, an unbeaten number six, Nevada, 19-15 inside eight minutes to go first half of the inaugural Air Force Reserve, Jerry Colangelo Classic here in Phoenix. The Grand Canyon students, the havoc, they love it. I got to imagine you love this too. Well, it's been great. It's uh, It's been a great show so far. 
In fact, in the second game, when we jumped out to an 11 to nothing lead, I thought maybe we might see the first shutout of the year. <laughs> but, but I guess it didn't last very long. Well, let's talk about what we've seen so far from this day of basketball. Sure. I mean, how phenomenal was game one between Tennessee knocking off Gonzaga? What were your takeaways watching that one? Well, two great teams, two well-coached teams, great athletes, big plays, big-time plays, and uh, it couldn't have ended any better, you know, with someone winning basically at the buzzer. It was it was great for the game, and you called it. You told us it was going to go down to the last possession. You know, I'm right once out of 12 times, and maybe that time I was. Well, you look at this GCU program out there, and the man that's on the sideline running this program, Dan Marley. Yes. When I talked to him yesterday, I said, "Tell me about your relationship with Jerry." He almost teared up. The game of basketball at its best is when you have people that can influence you for life. He talked about your level of influence, not just as a player, but more so even after his playing days are done. What does that mean to you to be able to give that and be part of that growth and development for coach? Well, it means a lot. Uh, it means a lot to me because life is relational. It's all about relationships. And when you have the opportunity to have an impact on young people like I have in, in the game of basketball, and to have it continue beyond a normal stretch of time, this is a long time with Dan Marley. He just goes back to the mid-80s when he was drafted. Um, and all these years that we've had this relationship, he's part of the family and he's a great, great guy. I mean, I have so much respect for him as a person. Outside of his coming along as a coach, I think he's done a great job. Jerry, take us back to when you brought him to yes. Phoenix. What do you remember about a young Dan Marley? I'll tell you what I remember. First of all, Cotton Fitzsimmons had the microphone, and the fans booed when we selected him at, at, at the open draft. And Cotton said, you people are going to woo the day you ever booed this kid. And by midseason, he was obviously one of the big crowd favorites. And uh, to see how he developed, he had knee issues, he had back issues coming out of college. The doctor said, stay away, short career. Let's fast forward, 14 years in the NBA, because you couldn't make two incisions, one over the heart and one in the forehead, to know what you really had. He was very special from day one. Well, and one of the things that he pointed out to me was, he said, you know, I kind of built this building. I was part of that whole thing, and he goes, and then when we open this building, we go to the NBA Finals in the first year with Chuck. Yeah. How special of it, and obviously you, you built this building, but how special was it to open this facility up, have the team that you had, and then make the run that you did? Well, from day one of that season, we were sold out for the season with a 5,000 wait list to get in. We had the best record in basketball for all 82 games. And we almost got knocked off in the first round by the Lakers. We were down 0-2 in the first round. Came back and won the series, and then went on to the finals. You know, we could have won, might have won, but there were three other times during my career when the same circumstances took place, and it didn't just happen. And then I go into baseball, and in our fourth year, we win a World Series. <laughs> God has a funny sense of humor. It's all I could say. How much fun did you have watching those Suns teams with Dan Marley and Kevin Johnson and Charles Barkley? Well, they were fun when you're when you're responsible for putting piece, people together and pieces together, and you see it all come together in fruition. It's very exciting. Way but off an offensive up. foul on Carlos Johnson. Yeah, good help side defense stepping up the line on the back line. So important if you're going to protect your basket. Look, slip on the outside, create the seam, and maybe a jump stop and you shoot the eight foot shot rather than barreling right in. But a good job that time by Cody Martin absorbing yes. that contact. That could have gone either way. Carlos probably would tend to try to force the shot going to the basket, then pulling up and stopping. The game of basketball, I mentioned this, has changed so dramatically that when Dan Marley led the NBA in 92-93 in three-pointers, he hit 167. A year ago, he wouldn't have been in the top 25 in the NBA. Is that a good thing? Well, that's a matter of real discussion. 
because there are people on one side of that issue and, and those on the other side. Um, I think the game is in pretty good shape, but for definitely it's true that the game has changed in how it's being played. Have you seen this area in the Phoenix area grow in the basketball community since you've been here? Well, when I got here, there were, you know, like 700,000 people. Today, there's 5 million. Uh, they didn't have much in the way of basketball programs for juniors. We kind of initiated all those programs. It was great to see all that come into play. And, you know, basketball put Phoenix on the map, uh, as you think back on the, on the last 30, 40 years. So I'm very proud of uh, the support the city's given us. And what about, what did it mean to see the Final Four here a couple of years ago? That was a big thing. We were uh, very excited about having the Final Four, and it was very successful, and it was just, again, uh, awarded to our marketplace, so we're we're happy about that. I just want to make sure everybody knows that Jordan Brown is actually a freshman. He's not a red shirt transfer senior for Nevada. He's a McDonald's All-American. A beautiful move on that last possession for the Wolfpack as they kind of see some control here in this game. Yeah, they uh, our wheels came off a little bit uh, after the run. I think they adjusted to the fact that we opened with a zone, yep. which is not something that Dan Marley plays very often. But I think it did get them a little confused, but they they, they gathered themselves, obviously. Here's not what's confusing about Grand Canyon and Coach Marley's program and what has been built uh, over there at GCU. Is I travel the country. Duke is phenomenal, obviously. Yeah. The environments go. Gonzaga at the kennel. Right. Allen Fieldhouse, if, you, if you've never gone there, it's a bucket list place to go watch a game, obviously. GCU, in a very short period of time, because of everybody, the 7,000 students that are over here to my right, yes, has yes. created an unbelievable and one of the best environments in the entire country. No How did doubt. that happen? Uh, you know, one day at a time, a, a game plan to create a culture, people bought in, and the enthusiasm that has been created on the campus and just about everything that's done is unbelievable. So I know it's something very special that we have. In a tight ball game is Jordan Brown, now with six off the bench, the freshman for Nevada, and a three-point lead. And the way that the community, Jerry, has embraced not just the basketball program, but the other athletic teams as well, and the way the students have responded to get behind their classmates. Yes. Um, you know, when you consider this has all happened in a matter of six years or so, um, it, it, it really speaks well about the future in terms of what's going to happen with all of our programs. But in particular, hopefully it's going to be basketball. A five-point lead for Nevada. Jerry, appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. you, guys. Appreciate Jerry it. Jerry Colangelo, the Take Hall of care. Famer. His team down five. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Do the do and McDonald's. Twenty-seven, twenty-two, number six, Nevada, leading Grand Canyon. Number six, Nevada, unbeaten. C.J. Warren in the house, enjoying this one. I think you enjoyed the first game too. Great community. What an afternoon of basketball here. Three teams ranked inside the top ten. And just an incredible opportunity to see some of the best teams in the country in one building and in honoring, obviously, Jerry Colangelo, who just sat down with us and what has been built here in the Valley of the Sun. And the weather's good, too. <laughs> I know a lot of people on the East Coast don't want to hear that right now, especially if you're in the southern portion of the East Coast. Well, after a hot start, Grand Canyon has cooled off. So, and I think it's important to acknowledge Jordan Brown. I mean, he, he has been great off the bench for Nevada. And here's a kid who's the highest ranked recruit in the history of Nevada. So as much as we talk about the transfers, that's how the initial buy-in was on Nevada. Now once you get that locked in, that allows you and opens up doors to go get a McDonald's All-American. Do you see some similarities between the way Eric Musselman's building this Nevada program back up that Mark Few did at Gonzaga? In, in terms of, it was the transfers that opened the door to get those high-level recruits. Yeah, but, I mean, look, Mark also had the ability to take over a program that Dan Monson already did a great job with, you know, and he took it to a whole new level. 
Eric Musselman inherited a program that was becoming very dormant. And now has injected life into Nevada Reno. And they have a great deal of pride about their basketball team. Nevada leads it by six. And that recent history, you alluded to it, Mark Fox. What he's done before him, Trent Johnson. Corey Henson from deep. Long rebound, tipped down to Cody Martin. Not to say after Mark Fox, though, things kind of slid away. And now Eric Musselman building it back up. Good. Matt Jackson returns for Grand Canyon. Hey, look, look at all the guys you just mentioned, too, and all the success that they had in their coaching careers. And Trent Johnson went to Stanford, then went to TCU. Mark Fox broke a bunch of records down at Georgia as a head coach for a level of consistency and brought life to that program. Mari Milstead in the drive. And the teardrop in the lane. They're just smart, patient basketball. And I think they'll find that. I think they've got to really force Nevada to have to want to defend multiple sides of the court. You get some good ball reversal action and find a way to force them to shift one or two times. I think Nevada's susceptible to breaking out of their stance a little bit. They're really good on one side. Now get over this side. All right, bring it back. Good. That's good basketball right there. Jared Martin missing a three. Michael Finke, the offensive rebound. Shovels it to Martin. And the rebound, Jordan Caroline for the Wolfpack. Nevada's just got so many scorers and so much talent. Oscar Freyer elevates for the rebound. Not a great week, by the way, for the Mountain West. I mean, you look at New Mexico, absolutely got boat raced. Michael I mean, St. Mary just came out, and George, well, Jordan Ford was phenomenal for Randy Bennett's team. And then, San Diego State last night. Well, and then San Diego State also lost to USD. They got a great student section, too. The show? The show. I like the names. Havoc, the show, the kennel. On the floor, as Jazz Johnson moving in, it's on Damari Milstead at Grand Canyon. Maybe UCLA needs to change the name of their student section, The Den. Sounds like we're going to sit down and, and have a nice coffee chat. Who would you like to go to The Den? Havoc seems crazy. The kennel, you, I mean, you go, you take your dog over to the kennel, and it's like, you know, a bunch of animals just running around barking at each other. You got the Zona Zoo out west. Yeah. The Izone at Michigan State. The camera crazy. crazy. I mean, this, that's all chaotic. The den sounds like we're going to read a book and have some tea. It's like you're going to John Wooden's living room. That was a good den, though. <laughs> fortunate enough to actually get the opportunity to do that. Seven for Jazz Johnson. It's Nevada by four. Final minute of this first half as Grand Canyon jumped out to an 11-0 then 14-2 lead. And Nevada steadied the ship a little bit since. And they're stepping up their pressure. And they're trying to deny the passes to the wings. Trying to get Grand Canyon to be uncomfortable in their half-court set. Grand Canyon started getting sloppy with the ball. And started leading some early runouts and some quick, easy baskets that built some confidence. And a foul will put Matt Jackson at the line. It's on Jordan Caroline. Nevada fouls on 24, Jordan Caroline, his first person. First on Caroline, he transferred from Southern Illinois. So Matt Jackson, the Melbourne Australian native, battled injuries, numerous surgeries throughout his Grand Canyon career, was away for nearly two years from the game because of five surgeries, back and hip, and now is finally healthy and contributing here in his senior year. Well, maybe some of those injuries are playing from Australian rules football. <laughs> I mean, talk about a sport that doesn't make a lot of sense. It's that one. I mean, boy, no pads whatsoever. And just like, let's go out and just beat our brains in. Okay, that sounds great. But he did play it growing up. He brings a little bit of that Aussie toughness to Grand Canyon. And he helps bring the Lopes back within two. 
in the zone from Grand Canyon. I think the zone's been much more effective than their man-to-man. -man. Look at how stagnant. Look at the shot clock. They, they really one pass in the offense and it's under 10 seconds. Cody Martin drives and gets to the bucket. He's got to deal with that kind of skill. Going quickly, Oscar Freyer. Matt Jackson steps into the shot and hits it as the first half comes to a close. That was great execution in a late half situation. It's easy to watch that made shot by Martin as he drove down the lane and put your head down for a second. Instead, Grand Canyon didn't do that. They said, let's try to catch him off balance for the throw ahead. Run the floor, big fella. Step on in. The back's feeling fine today. We got a two-point game with the must bus out in front. They're trying to stay undefeated. And a tight one in Phoenix. Number six, Nevada by two. Jerry Colangelo Classic from downtown Phoenix and a good one in game two of our doubleheader from Talking Stick Resort Arena. Along with former UCLA captain Sean Farnham, Roxy Bernstein with you. And a fun first half of game two. Had an unbelievable game one. Number six unbeaten Nevada in game two. Off to a slow start. Grand Canyon came out blazing against the Wolfpack. Well, you mentioned it off the top. You said, Sean, okay, do you think we've seen one undefeated team go down? Could we see a potential second number one, uh, you know, undefeated team go down? And the looks of it early, the answer was going to be yes. I mean, just outstanding effort right off the bat for Grand Canyon in front of their massive... ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Mountain Dew. Do the do. Fun one here in downtown Phoenix. 9-0, number six, Nevada. Clinging to a two-point lead on Grand Canyon. Game two of the inaugural Air Force Reserve, Jerry Colangelo Classic. I want to do this again. Can we make another classic next year? We do it tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. The way these two oh games are gone. Goodness. I just love college basketball so much. Working inside. And a power move from Alessandra Labor. We just talked about this. Points in the paint going to be key here in the second half. And obviously Dan Marley said, hey, look, we're shooting the ball well from the outside. But to keep our shots clean and to get them open on the outside, we have to have some production down low. Come out that first possession, post up immediately. They stay in the zone defense. And a 3-2 strong from Trayshawn Thurman out of bounds. It stays with the Wolfpack. Again, like, Grant Canyon got off to that 11-0 lead to start the game. It was 14-2 before Nevada got going. Well, and part of that is because they've done an outstanding job of not allowing second-chance opportunities. Here's one right now for Nevada. they got to try to capitalize on it, but only two offensive rebounds in the entire first half for Nevada. And Dan Marley said, hey, there is no leaking out tomorrow. Yeah, yesterday, shoot around. He said, we have got to get all. Shot goes up, five guys go to the glass. And they've been very disciplined in doing so. Drop step to the basket. Ooh. And missing inside, Trey Porter out of bounds. Nevada ball. And, and that's one where Trey Porter doesn't have enough lift. You just got to finish it. I mean, just put it in. It's two points. I understand you want to get the dunk. And he's an elite level athlete. But just finish around the basket. Coming into today, Nevada had trailed at the half in each of their last three games, but had a two-point lead today after trailing by as many as 12 in the first half. Caleb Martin missing a three. Boy, has Caleb Martin really struggled from the outside. They need him to pick up his pattern here in the second half of being a second half performer. 69% of his scoring this season has come in the second half of games. He had six points in the first half. Four of them came from the free throw line. 0 for 3 from beyond the arc and 1 for 5 shooting. The roll goes for Damari Milstead. And Grand Canyon reclaims the lead. The Bay Area product from Hayward. High school teammate of Oscar Freire who just came away with that for the Antelopes. I'm not sure what Cody was looking at on that pass. <laughs> Alessandro Labor missing from deep. The kick out. Milstead. And the rebound nearly went in off a deflection from Nevada. You saw that last night in the NBA, I think. Cody Martin the bucket. I was watching sports yeah. last night. I think it was a, was it Enos Cantor in the Knicks? 
I believe that it was. I can't remember which game it was, but I do remember that they, highlight. They, they basically had a defensive rebound dunk for the other team. And Here's a steal. Here's a dunk in transition to Nevada. Oh, no, wait. Okay, well, it's still Take that shot, Barnum. Yeah. I'm going to do the traditional lay it in. Still counts for two. First points for Trajan Furman. Transfer from Omaha. Under career start today for Thurman between Omaha and Nevada. That's Alessandro Labor from deep. Grand Canyon by one, three minutes into the second half. And Freyer clears for Grand Canyon. Here comes TCU. Back out, be settle it down. Probe, but always protect the basketball. If you give up live ball turnovers against Nevada, they're going to turn into two. And the rebound, Trayshawn Thurman for the Wolfpack. And a travel called on Thurman. And Eric Musselman is beside himself. He is on the floor, his arms raised above his head. He wanted contact on that, and he wanted a foul, and so did Cody Martin. Trayshawn Thurman still hunched over, clutching that right knee. I, th I think it was con the contact from behind is what caused the f caused him to fall. I mean, so if you're going to call the travel, you, you got to call the contact. And a foul in the post. And it's Cody Martin, his second. And Eric Musselman is really frustrated right now. Yeah, he's all going for a walk all the way to the end of the bench. I mean, just wondering what's going on. As a head coach, you sitting there, you want your team to perform well. And he's seen his team fall behind early. You know, a lot of the games frequently this year, but. The block from Thurman. This is usually the time where Nevada starts to impose its will, and right now Grand Canyon is. That's the thing about Eric Musselman's team this year. They know they're getting the other team's best shot. Every night they take the floor. Jazz Johnson a transition three. Jazz Johnson is one of those guys that has come off the bench and made plays. He made plays against ASU. He's making a three there to regain the lead for Nevada. He plays with such poise and importance for this Nevada team. He's been Mr. Sixth Man for them. Oscar Freyer, way off on the three. Here comes Caleb Martin. Look at that passing. And the three missed by Cody Martin for the unselfish nature. Loose ball diving. Anataya, Caroline on the deck. Freyer on the deck. Jump and a jump ball, the arrow points to Nevada in a two-point game. But for Nevada, the opportunity to make plays at the defense end. Be aggressive, try to shore things up. Two blocks, one possession. The Wolfpack trying to tighten up the defense and at the offensive end. Play a little jazz, Mr. Johnson. Knocks it down from the outside. Instant offense off the bench. Jordan Caroline, 63% foul shooter. And he's got 11. That's his first attempt, which is crazy, at the free throw line because he averages 8.3 per contest. He had a game against Tulsa earlier this season where he shot 17 free throws. Here is Labor inside. Nine for Alessandra Labor with foul trouble in the first half. Seven of his nine since halftime. Really kind of respect Grand Canyon coming out here and the way that they've played. You know, yes, they have the lead, and Nevada does what Nevada does and comes back, but they're trying to match him shot for shot here in the second half. And they force the turnover. And Nevada, they don't turn it over very much, only nine times per game. That has not been the case as a late though. I mean, they struggled against ASU turning the ball over 
in that contest. They had 11 turnovers in that game. Eight of them came in the first eight minutes and only three the rest of the way. And that's their 10th today coming into this ball game. Third in the country in fewest turnovers per game as Michael Finke goes inside. And again, Finke, the transfer from Illinois. They, they really feel like he can take a huge step forward and that this season he hasn't necessarily taken the step that they know that he's capable of. I think you start to see a little bit more confidence. And it takes time when you're a transfer and you join a new team and you, you have a new system to integrate into. Imagine the battles that Grand Canyon is going to have with New Mexico State. Boy, what a battle Kansas had yesterday from New Mexico State. Right down the wire between the Aggies and the Jayhawks. Tough shot from Labor Miss, the rebound run down, missed it. To the basket and the slot goaltending on Cody Martin. Count the basket to Alessandro Labor. Eric Musselman is in the face right now of Jazz Johnson. Shot goes up. Everybody's standing on the outside watching, and I think what he's saying is you've got to react to the ball, and you're standing just waiting. And Nevada's waiting for team, waiting for place to happen for them. You've got to go create a place. Caleb Martin, a That's three. A play. He had this look That's on his good. face as if to say, finally. Yep. Well, and see if that ignites him. You mentioned his ability to score in the second half of contests. Coming into today, he scored 174 points on the year. 120 have come after halftime. You just don't play him. <laughs> and they go for the rebound of Fallon Carlos Johnson of Grand Canyon. Hey, the top the top line, 12.40 remaining. And number six, unbeaten Nevada, only up four on Grand Canyon. And if you look at the schedule for Nevada, Sean, there don't appear to be many losses or potential losses on the schedule. Well, you come up after this game, you got South Dakota State at home, Akron at home before you go on the road to take on Utah. And then you got a battle against Utah State and that, that starts off conference play. And, and you look at the Mountain West Conference, we mentioned it earlier. Boise Grand State Canyon lost Michael to Grand Canyon. Canyon. San Diego State took two losses this week, San Diego. As well as a Cal and it's a Cal team that just lost to USF and St. Mary's in back-to-back -back games. UNLV's got a good opportunity a week from yesterday to take on BYU and maybe get a get a quality win there for the Mountain West Conference. Fresno State shown some potential yeah. in the Mountain West. But it's, it, no one's really separating themselves to the point where you would look at Grand Canyon and go, okay, hey, they they could be in trouble here. You know, uh, you know, a hiccup's going to happen eventually. All right, I mean, everybody's talking about Gonzaga maybe going undefeated if they were able to get past Tennessee and North Carolina, but the thing about the schedule is that USC is under-delivered so far this college basketball season really in, a, in a big, big way. I mean, they just got absolutely destroyed by Jamie Dixon and TCU. And the only team that's likely to be ranked all season long for Nevada is going to be that Arizona State win that they just had on Friday night. How will that play out for the selection committee? And when they're viewing this team and they understand the success they had a year ago, plus the pieces that they have, it's going to be a big question mark. Off balance and a foul will put Cody Martin at the line for the Wolfpack. I, I think realistically, Nevada gets a two seed or a three seed in the NCAA tournament. They're going to be very thrilled. And it's one that they will have earned. The foul of Michael Fink, he is Cody Martin to the line. The difference being is when you start looking at the other teams like a Virginia, a Michigan, uh, a Duke, obviously, they have the opportunity to pick up a ton of quadrant one victories, those high quality wins in conference play for Eric Musselman's team. They got to make a statement every single night and protect their program. Tight one in Phoenix is number six, Nevada, trying to stay unbeaten with Sean Farnham. Roxy Bernstein with you. Downtown Phoenix and the Wolfpack. Eight of their nine wins so far have come by double digits. They're 9-0 for the first time as a Division I program. They were elevated to Division I back 1969-1970. They did begin 1951-52, 14-0.
But they're off to their best start as a Division I program. They're also in the midst of 25 days without a home game, six consecutive games away from Reno. And, and I think that's important to note when you're talking about their schedule. You know, and look, you go get road wins. Road wins matter at the end of the season. And when you're not playing at home and you're playing, you know, at Loyola Chicago, a Final Four team from a season ago, you're playing in Los Angeles against USC. You're playing in Los Angeles against Arizona State. You're playing this neutral side game against Grand Canyon. You're playing at Utah. You know, and some of it is you can't predict when you're doing scheduling how teams are going to be in the year in which you play them because you make these agreements a couple years out. Look, Utah's not having a good season. Really, if you have a Pac-12 team on your schedule right now outside of Arizona State, you're, you're kind of like, uh, like we thought it was going to be better than what it was, right? Offensive foul on George Carroll. UCLA got a nice win yesterday, but did not play well. Oregon trying to give it away before they found a way to win it, thanks to Chris Wilkes for UCLA. And, and Oregon hasn't played that well at all at the start of the season. I mean, bowl bowl, yeah, it's fine, but you're losing at home to Texas Southern. And Washington's a team that I still think is going to find a way inside the Pac-12 and will be amongst the best in the conference. I predicted before the start of the season, I thought that they'd win the conference, and they still might. Damari Milstead, an open look. But USC, Utah, Cal. A tough goal, but for the Pac-12 so far. And Arizona, tough loss today at Alabama. And Alabama's a team that lost to Northeastern. And the spin from Cody Marshall. I mean, that matters. November and December, and people, when they watch college basketball, oh, the games don't really matter until you get to conference play. You hear that all the time. No, no, they all matter, actually. And a lot of times, our view of a particular conference comes off of what they do in November and December. How do you perform in the non-conference? How do you perform against teams that when you can have the freedom to go out and schedule, then can separate yourself? And right now, Eric Musselman's team, is one of those teams in college basketball that's very rare and few and far between that has answered the bell every single night. And since we're here in the Phoenix area, look, that's why Arizona State got into the tournament last year because of what they did early by beating Xavier in Las Vegas and Jabari Milstead with a flow. And they won at Kansas last year. Lugan Storm is one of the premier freshmen in all of college basketball. The effort and one of the putback. I thought Derek Musselman. Jordan Caroline. I thought Derek Musselman is outboard. He goes, he's a pro. There is no question. He is a pro. He has a pro body. His shot is easily fixed as far as getting it more consistent. It's not a bad looking shot. He had a really deep three early in that game against Nevada. But his release and everything is pretty good. And it's just a couple of fine tuning and, and more repetition. And he's going to become an elite level shooter from the outside, which goes to his game which is attacking and finishing around the basket. Bobby Hurley's done a tremendous job talking about basketball in this area. GCU, obviously, the, the havoc, the fans. And Bobby Hurley brought life back to Tempe as well. For so long, college basketball here in the state of Arizona is a three from Carlos Johnson, dominated by Arizona. And the Wildcats, okay, maybe they're not at that level right now, but they'll get back there when you look at our National Recruiting Director, Paul Biancardi's rankings of what Arizona is doing recruiting-wise. They're going to be right back. Just Google Nico Mannion, and you'll have every answer you need to know on whether or not you think Arizona's going to be back. And a travel call that goes right back to Nevada. Okay, here's what I would say about that call. Consistency. Whether Eric Musselman liked the call down here or not, the same play just happened in front of his bench, and they gave the exact same call. So as an officiating group, that's what you want, consistency. Players must adjust to the officials. And as long as the officials are consistent, that's all you want. Greg Nixon working with Michael Reed and Darren White on this game here in Phoenix today. All these guys very experienced. Multiple NCAA tournaments. Four-point lead for Nevada. We've known them for years. Yeah. Do a really good job. It's cool. Here's Caleb Martin attacking. 
And a steal, what a play by Matt Jackson. Maybe that's what the Aussie rules football applying. It's not the way, way he kick. defended. <laughs> oh, Carlos Johnson, a cut! Plus one for Carlos Johnson. What an outstanding job moving without the basketball. As a young player, if I was a 13-year-old watching this game courtside, what I would say to myself is, Dad, I want to cut and move without the basketball like that. That's winning basketball right there. That is tremendous. Second foul of Treshawn Thurman. Johnson for the and one to pull the Lopes within one. Nine minutes to go. If you're standing still out on the court, you're easy to guard. If you move when you don't have the ball, you make yourself a better basketball player. And Nevada getting all they can handle from Grand Canyon. And the Havocs here in Phoenix. A good putt. Again, Caroline draws the foul. It, it, it almost mirror image as far as plays go and so often in the game right now because we are relying upon the three-point shot We don't have guys moving and Basketball is at its best as Jerry Colangelo said when people are cutting moving spacing the floor playing together Eighteen points nine rebounds for Caroline who's now four for five at the line First foul on Matt Jackson. 8.36 to go. Grand Canyon trying for their first win against a ranked team. Caroline missed both, and they're dealing with number six, Nevada. We saw one upset when you look at the Rams earlier today as Jazz Johnson just taken out by a mean screen. Oscar Freire trying to give Grand Canyon the lead. I mean, Jazz Johnson just buckled at midcourt. And if I'm Jazz, I'm yelling at my teammate, wait, who was guarding this guy, and how come you didn't tell me there was a screen coming? Caroline. And a travel. We had a thriller in game one, and we're heading in that direction here in game two. Canyon, worth repeating, has never beaten a top 25 team. They've got number six on the ropes. Can they continue to play at the level in which we've seen so far? 0-5 all time against ranked teams in this upstart program under Dan Marley. What a fun game. This has been a great afternoon of basketball here in Phoenix, Arizona. Cody Martin missing a three. Oscar Freire the rebound. This is the third opportunity now to take the lead in this game. Mentally, it'd be big if they can get over the hurdle. And go you, go to the, you go to the under eight timeout with the lead. That's important. Jared Martin the scoop and the rebound. Here comes Jordan Caroline for the pack. Jazz Johnson, three for Jazz Johnson. And that is outstanding ball movement in transition for Nevada. Three times in a row, Grand Canyon had an opportunity to take a lead, and instead they missed all three. Finally, Nevada makes them pay. One pass, no dribble, know where the shooter are. Get his feet set, drill it. What a scene in Phoenix with the havoc. The Grand Canyon student section loving every minute of this, and they love to see an upset. And for Nevada, they escaped Friday night against Arizona State in LA. They really did, and Arizona State came out great. That block, by the way, might have been the whole key to the turnaround in that contest, because not every play is created equal. You make a play like that, it energizes your teammates. And then Caleb Martin really did what he does normally, and that's take over the game in the second half. 
an impressive performance, an impressive rally against a very good Arizona State team. Eric Muscles, Musselman was clapping after that one. Will he be clapping after this one? Will they stay unbeaten? We've had one unbeaten fall here in Phoenix today with that thriller behind Admiral Schofield and Tennessee knock Gonzaga from the unbeatens. And now a tight one for Eric Musselman and Nevada. 9-0, up four on Grand Canyon inside now, 6.45 to go. Well, and one of the big concerns that Dan Marley said yesterday was the ability to keep Nevada off the free throw line. Right now it's 15 attempts to just five for Grand Canyon. Got it, got it. Runner missed by Damari Milstead. Back to man-to-man -man. again. I think the zone has been much better for Grand Canyon. I know Dan Marley doesn't like playing it. He loves to play man-to-man, -man, but when you go to the man-to-man -man off defense, it allows those driving lanes and seams to open up for Nevada. They're up by four. Number six undefeated Nevada up four on Grand Canyon with 6.15 to go here in Phoenix. Little man wants to be part of the Havoc eventually, and right now the Havoc would love to see Nevada get crossed off this list. We've already dropped the Gonzaga Bulldogs from the list of undefeated teams in college basketball. Will Nevada be the second team to be off this list? And again, the free throw line is a big separating factor in this game so far. And it was a concern of Dan Marley. It's been a concern of them really all season long. They too, too frequently have allowed their opponents to get to the free throw line and manufacture points. Jazz Johnson three for three at the line. 14 points off the bench for the transfer from Portland. They're plus 10 at the free throw line in a six point game. That seems significant. I would say so. Former All-Star. An Olympian and legend of these parts, Dan Marlin, has his antelopes battling against number six, Nevada. Trey Drexel, a tough pull-up, and the rebound, Jordan Carolina. A drought of over three minutes now for the Lopes. Ooh. Now go back to the and it's a great adjustment by Dan Marley. They cannot play man-to-man -man against this Nevada team. Uh, because that's where Eric Musselman thrives with his offense, is spacing, setting screens, and trying to create mismatches and seams. Top shot from the top rims on from Caleb Martin. And the rebound, Jared Martin for Grand Canyon. Johnson lost the ball. Staying in front, not allowing any dribble penetration at all. When you force your opponent to go east-west versus north-south, you win. Shot clock at 10. Caleb Mark. NBA three. The rebound tip free, and Johnson controls for the Lopes. It's over four minutes now without scoring for Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon says, you know what, we uh, see Nevada's defense, and we're going to raise you up and play equally a stingy defense at the other end. they got to figure out a way to score. They get the ball down inside. you got an advantage right there. you got to play the mismatch. Trey Drexel, three. Third three for Drexel. And he cuts the Wolfpack lead in half, watching four minutes to go. Roxy, why do you want the ball inside? Well, because the defense is going to turn and look. And when they turn and look, if you have your feet set on the perimeter, it's a catch-and-shoot situation. Drexel hasn't had any good looks since early in the first half, but when he has, he's drilled them. Oh, Offensive yeah. foul on Caroline. Third on Jordan Caroline. And a turnover has the Havocs going nuts. Three-point game in the desert. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Air Force Reserve. Explore your opportunities. Go to AFReserve.com. City, welcome what's next.
and McDonald's. Next Saturday, college basketball at ESPN as Villanova travels to Fog Allen Fieldhouse to take on Bill Self with the Jayhawks, number two Kansas, and number 21 Villanova, noon Eastern, also available everywhere on the ESPN app. Sonic Blockbuster next week in Lawrence, Kansas. You know what? We've had two games that are blockbusters here yeah. at the Jerry Colangelo Classic in Phoenix, a thriller where Tennessee was able to hold off and knock off Gonzaga, the top-ranked team in the country. And here, Grand Canyon, this place has been buzzing, and they're giving Nevada all the Wolfpack can handle. Well, and, and a big part of that is because of their unselfishness and then their willingness to defend. They have turned Nevada over 14 times. You mentioned this is a team that averages just a little bit over eight turnovers per contest, and they've forced 14. Now, Jordan Caroline has been sensational. He got the seventh double-double of the season, 18 and 11 for him. But Caleb Martin, just two of nine shooting, one of seven from beyond the arc. If I'm GCU, take away the paint, force them to shoot up over the top, and give yourself an opportunity. But you cannot have empty possessions yourself. Now, the only thing good about that turnover is it wasn't a live ball turnover. It allows you to come back and set up your defense and try to force and frustrate Nevada. Here's the zone again, put on by the Antelopes. Take away the paint. Caleb Martin missing a three. Michael Finke the rebound. All day, I'm giving up that shot right now. Michael Finke backing in. Central Labor draws the foul. And two shots. It's on Jordan Caroline. That's number four. He's really the only one in foul trouble right now for Nevada. I just mentioned the numbers in which he has. Alessandro you know, Lever from Italy is named the preseason WAC Player of the Year. Did not play well last time out. Only had three points and two rebounds. Played very well against Seton Hall. Had 20 in that game. First team all whack last year was the whack freshman of the year. And he pulls Grand Canyon to within one. The pressure kind of shifts to Nevada here. I mean, look, Grand Canyon comes to this game. With no offense to Grand Canyon, but everyone's looking at Nevada going, hey, they're probably going to lose this game. You know, I mean, if that is that good. And Jordan Caroline will go back to the strike. Fourth on Alessandra Lever. Well, and here's the thing. Again, don't fly by on your closeout on the perimeter, allowing him to get that seam. I would close out short on everything right now. Nevada is just 6 of 23 from beyond the arc. Caroline, one more. Seven double-doubles in Nevada's first 10 games. With another one here today. Inside the arc, they're getting beat. In, at the free throw line, they're getting beat. Protect the paint. Force Nevada to be a jump shooting team. 20 now for Caroline. Three-point game, two and a half minutes to go. Mari Milstead leans in, can't get the roll. Foul going for the rebound, and it's on Grand Canyon, and that's four on Michael Finke. Huge miss shot there. Because not only do you miss the shot, you're allowing Nevada to just walk right down to the other end of the floor and shoot free throws. 212 remaining. And it's Caroline right back to the line. 64-61 Nevada. Trying to go to 10-0. Trying to remain unbeaten. A Grand Canyon looking for their first win against a ranked opponent. 
The well, amazing thing about Caroline is the familiarity that he has with Michael Finke at Grand Canyon. They were on the same fifth grade basketball team out of Illinois. In fact, it was Michael's dad who was their coach. Both of them from Champaign, Illinois. Michael Finke went to Illinois before Grand Canyon, while Jordan Caroline went to Southern Illinois before transferring to Nevada. And a timeout for Thunder Dan Marley. Five point game, Grand Canyon trying to make one last push. Well, what a ball game, Sean, for Jordan Caroline. Single handedly has put, kept Nevada in front of Grand Canyon. Well, with Caleb Martin really struggling from the field, it's, it's been Caroline. And the thing about him is you look at his stature and you assume that everything has to come at the rim like on that made field goal. But as you've seen, he has the ability to put it down and finish. He has the ability to step out, knock down three-point looks. And he is a complete basketball player that has thrived playing with the Martin Twins. Last year, first team all Mountain West for Caroline who was the most outstanding player of the Mountain West Tournament as a sophomore, began his career at Southern Illinois where he was a member of the all-freshman team in the Missouri Valley Conference. And he's a double-double machine. It's, it's seemingly every game he's, he's going to grab one. He's got seven and ten games. 34 been. now in his career. And it's amazing because it's two-plus years for him in Nevada. He's already 14th in Nevada history in scoring and eighth in rebounds. Production that he has had, Eric Musselman has been tremendous. Good communication that time on the screen, too, by Caroline. Letting Jazz Johnson know. And a reach in. Three on Trayshawn Thurman. And, and, and just a silly foul. He's third. There are times when you want a foul, obviously, and there's times you don't need a foul. You're in great That's defensive position. The, the shot clock is winding down. They're not really going anywhere. His back is to the basket, and you decide to reach in from behind. That is an easy call. Alessandro Labor at the line. Misses the front end of a one and one. You don't allow anything in the paint if you're Grand Canyon. Forced him to shoot over the top. Strong finish by Caleb Martin. He turns that corner, sees that team, he's aggressive, he's able to finish. And that might have done it in this game, to be honest with you. The largest lead of the game for Nevada, believe it or not. Missed inside by Labor. And a foul. It's on Oscar Freyer of Grand Canyon with a minute 19 to go. A couple things that I think about as I watch this game. Let's start first with Greg King. For Dan Marley's team, and they're not going to get their first top 25 win. But boy, how close are they? Seton Hall just knocked off Kentucky yesterday, and this is a Grand Canyon team that was right with them. I mean, the margin is very thin for them. And if they don't do exactly everything that they want to do in the Sky Report, well, then they struggle. But today, for the most part, they did. They, they were really good at the defensive end. They frustrated Nevada. They forced them into turnovers. The biggest problem has been sending Nevada to the free throw line. That's the separation in this game right now. Conversely, if you're in Nevada, you've got to look at this and say, all right, we cannot afford to continue to fall behind to start games. Why is it that we're not starting the right way? Because if you want to be amongst the nation's best, if you want to be seen as a team that has a chance to get a two seed in the NCAA tournament, a three seed in the NCAA tournament, you can't come out sleepwalking because eventually when you do that, you're going to get bit. And then everybody's going to look and say, well, you know, now they start micromanaging your schedule. Now only one nationally ranked team on their entire schedule this season. And those are the conversations you don't want having come late February. There were chances for Grand Canyon to take the lead. They couldn't get over the hump. And since it was a one-point game, Nevada's scored seven straight points, and Grand Canyon's come up empty time and time again in the offensive end. Alessandro Labor has fouled out his fifth. 
He leaves with 13 points. As Jazz Johnson will go to the line for the Wolfpack. Grand Canyon will have a shot at Texas and shot the smart next Saturday at Austin. Michael Finke returns for Grand Canyon, replacing Alessandro Cooper. And here is Jazz Johnson, one more coming. Coming up, Sports Center tonight, 11 Eastern on ESPN. Reaction and analysis from the Sunday night matchup between the Rams and the Bears. Battle the NFC East, Eagles and Cowboys, plus a conversation with Russell Wilson. Tonight, Sports Center, 11 Eastern. We got Monday Night Football tomorrow night. It's the Vikings and the Seahawks. Looking forward to that. And it's Trey Drexel with the bucket. And a timeout for the Lopes with 30 seconds to play. Dan Marley is hot about something over there. Uh, he's trying to get the attention of one of his officials because he wants to just pretty much lay into him. But <laughs> Drexel has shown the ability to score the basketball, the transfer from Western Washington, where he was first team all great Northwest Athletic Conference. He can really score. Uh, now he's trying to be transitioned into more of that pure point guard role. I think for him he's got to continue to find that balance because if you just try to be a pass first point guard, you're taking away the ability of your scoring punch. And that's something that Grand King is going to need more and more as the season progresses. And I think what they're showing here today, Sean, Grand Canyon against Nevada, and what we saw from New Mexico State yesterday against Kansas, this is going to be a competitive battle atop the WAC conference, and that's going to make for a great tournament in Las Vegas in March. It's going to be fantastic, and the health of college basketball overall is really high. There's a lot of really good teams in college basketball this year. I'm not sure and I'm not sold that we have a great team. I think the Zags still have a chance to be a great team. I know Tennessee is a really, really good team capable of winning the national championship and going to a Final Four. They proved that today. Virginia, Duke, Michigan has maybe had the best start of anybody in the college basketball landscape right now. Kansas. It's, it's a great start to the college basketball. And then we could get somebody like Loyola of Chicago who could surprise everybody and make a run. Jazz Johnson in the line. Jazz Johnson. Now I can see why it's so difficult to play games at Grand Canyon. The support. I want to do it here. Okay, so the first time I saw Havoc was actually at the three-point slam dunk competition when the Final Four was here. And they had it at Grand Canyon University. And I was so blown away and impressed with their student body. And today, even more so. They were here early and loud in the first game, and their team wasn't even playing. Trey Drexel of three. 11 seconds to go. And they foul Caleb Martin. It's on Jamari Milstead, his fourth. Ten and a half seconds for base. And for the Wolfpack, they'll regroup in Eric Musselman's team next Saturday hosting South Dakota State. Didn't Mike Dom just go over 2,500 points. Unbelievable. I mean, just great scorer in college basketball. It takes me back to when Doug McDermott went over 3,000. I mean, just think about the elite company you have to be in to be able to score that many points in the short period of time that you have in a college game. They got to find some way to slow him down next week. One more for Caleb Martin. And Martin gets the tip. We'll back it out. And Nevada will run out the clock and remain one of the unbeatens in college basketball. The Pack going to 10 and 0, but got a scare from Grand Canyon. 74 66. Nevada with the win. And Jordan Caroline, our player of the game. Not every game is going to be pretty. Not every win is going to be aesthetic to the eye as you go back and watch the film. But these are the type of games you want to win and you have to win to continue to keep your name in that national discussion. And for Coach Eric Musselman, his team did what they had to do to grind out a victory in what was not a neutral side game. <laughs> this was definitely at a home game feel for Grand Canyon who falls to 5-4. and four. But Nevada 10-0.
for the first time as a Division I program and a tremendous start for the pack. And they got a battle from the Antelopes of Grand Canyon. Got their hands full with Arizona State, found a way to come back and win Friday in L.A. Then another technically neutral site game here in Phoenix today. And they were down 11-0, 14-2, but came back to get the win. And Sean Farnham standing by with Eric Musselman. Coach, obviously a very late game for you on Friday night. You guys got off to a slow start there, but you got off to a slow start again tonight. What do you have to do to try to find a way to get your team to avoid these kind of pitfalls early? Well, I thought Coach Marley did a great job. He had a lot of time to prepare. I think they had like eight days. They came out in the zone, and obviously we're best against zone when Jazz Johnson's in. And we both halves, we started off really bad with, with the bigger lineup trying to score the ball. But, you know, this will be good for our team over the long haul. Uh, because we played six straight games away from home, and to go 6-0, and even though this was ugly, by far our worst game of the year, but you have to credit the environment, Coach Marley. You mentioned playing all those games in a row away from home. Was it to test this experienced group and, and to kind of, you know, establish yourself as, hey, we've got to get comfortable if we're going to win in March to win away from our building? We wanted to play in some tough environments, and there was a lot of people, quite frankly, that are friends of mine in the business that said, what are you doing playing Grand Canyon within 100 miles of Phoenix? Because they do draw and they have a great environment. This is good for us. It'll help us in league play when we go into some buildings that are full and have great student sections. Jordan Caroline continues to be just a workhorse for you. Can you put into perspective his value for your team when he goes out and gets a double-double seemingly every night? Not really, because he's so consistent. He's got such great effort. And we don't run a lot of plays for him. He kind of manufactures stuff on his own. And he's a hard guy to defend against when he goes and misses and gets his own and draws and ones. He's just a phenomenal athlete. He keeps getting better and better. You mentioned all these road games, Coach. Do you remember what your bet feels like? Because you've got two home games now. We can't wait to get home. We're not going to have easy practices next week. I can tell you that. We got a lot of stuff we got to clean up this week. All right, congratulations on the victory, Thanks, Coach. Sean, appreciate it. That's after a win. Nevada and Eric Musselman, 10 and 0, the number six team in the country, is still unbeaten after they got all they could handle from Grand Canyon. For Sean Farnham, our ESPN crew, Roxy Bernstein, saying so long for the desert. A great day of college basketball in Phoenix and a memorable day of hoops in the Jerry Colangelo Classic.